as Black Lives Matter protests have gripped the entire country. Uh, and of course, Trump's attention and everybody's essentially a, a attention. Dr. Anthony Fauci, Trump's infectious disease expert in the White House Coronavirus Task Force, is very concerned. He's very concerned that Trump is no longer focused on fighting COVID-19. In an interview with health-oriented news website Stat, published on Monday, Fauci said, Trump's not really talking to me anymore. Well, that's not good. In fact, he said this, quote, We used to have task force meetings every single day, including Saturday and Sunday. And about 75% of the time after the task force meeting, we'd meet back with the president. So I was meeting with him four times a week back a month ago, uh, a month or so ago. But as you probably noticed, that the task force meetings have not occurred as often lately. And certainly my meetings with the president have been dramatically decreased. Dramatically. Well, of course it has. I mean, Donald Trump and the right wing decided that coronavirus is basically over, right? The whole thing, done. No, we're, we're sick of it, right? We're tired of the coronavirus, and so let's move on. Uh, Obamagate. And let's bring in the military to crush protesters. Yeah, so that's that's what they're on now, right? Uh, they said, it's time to open up the country. Despite, of course, coronavirus cases nationally continuing to rise in places that have opened up. Uh, now, the newest place to have opened up is actually uh, my home state of Michigan, where, look, we have seen drop off of cases, and that's good. However, I think it's not time, and certainly Dr. Fauci thinks that it's not quite time to begin to open up, but understand that she might not have had a choice. Uh, that's uh, and by she, I mean Gretchen Whitmer. She and a lot of other governors right now, and and it's not just a result of the protests, although that hasn't exactly helped in this situation. You've had state government, uh, you know, state governments. Their budgets are crushed. They've gotten destroyed by this virus by having to shut down. And they've gotten basically very little help from the federal government. So understand that, that, that these budgets, again, have been busted. And now they have to pay police. Uh, now they're paying police extra to do, you know, policing uh, for the protests and, and all this stuff. And so these budgets are, are, are maxed out. So they have no choice but to reopen. And so that's the situation that might actually be the situation here in Michigan. Uh, where budget constraints have basically forced our governor to open up before it's ready. And so even though that, you know, Michigan has actually had a pretty good, uh, pretty stringent stay at home order in place for some time. And so understand that, right? So now there's a new complication, again, that has entered the scene, as I mentioned before, it's the protests, right? Tens of thousands, even more taken to the streets to protest the murder of George Floyd, right? And, of course, to protest police brutality. Now, look, uh, that's going to lead to more coronavirus infections. I'm, I'm kind of worried about that, and I, I think a lot of us should be too. Even though I do support the protesters, right, I'm also worried that this could be what triggers a second coronavirus wave that, could be more, that, that, that would be more deadly than the first one. I don't even think we're done with the first one yet. And so trying to trigger a second one in a couple of weeks, that's not going to be good. That's going to be very bad. We've had 16 states that have opened up already, right? Uh, and some of them, for example, Georgia have opened up very, very aggressively. Uh, that's, of course, Brian Kemp, uh, corrupt, incredibly corrupt, doesn't care at all about his citizens, about people, especially since most of the people dying for coronavirus are black, um, overwhelmingly African-American have been dying from coronavirus, from COVID-19. And so that is a big, big problem. Brian Kemp doesn't care. Brian Kemp just wanted to open up the economy so that, I don't know, he could try to get reelected or something and help Donald Trump. It, it really, it really doesn't matter to them, right? So now Trump, talking about him, he's not interested in leading on this issue. He's done with it. It's over. He's got, he's bored. His economic numbers are trash because of the shutdown. And so there goes his advantage in the election. 
That's it. I mean, everything is about Donald Trump staying in power. And that's it. That's it. Now, Trump, as a result, has stopped hosting daily press briefings on the country's coronavirus response after polling suggested that his appearances were hurting his favorability. Again, all about his reelection. All about it. Uh, and what do you expect is going to happen, right? If you go out there every day and do these coronavirus briefings, and then you say stupid things like, why don't we inject disinfectant? No, don't do that. That's stupid and ridiculous and deadly and stupid. Don't do that. But this is what the president says in these briefings and then goes on to complain about the media. And so, yeah, of course it was hurting his reelection. Uh, and so maybe he took that as a thing of, well, they don't, they don't, they don't like me going out and talking about this. So uh, uh, it, it must be because it's over. No, it's not over. It's not over. We should be uh, concerned about COVID-19. And again, unfortunately, being concerned about COVID-19 and showing the government is concerned about it goes now against the Republican message of, no, don't worry, go out. Go frequent the churches. And by the way, the whole thing about the churches is just all about getting money for the churches. Uh, you don't need a church to worship. No, uh, you can worship at home uh, and do just as good of a job. If you believe that God's everywhere, then it doesn't matter where you pray. No, that was, of course, all about the churches getting tithed. And let's be honest about that. Uh, and not only that, but they want people to go out to consume, to, big, to give these, these big corporations money, which have already made, what, $365 billion since the shutdown anyway. The people that have been hurt the most are small businesses, of which 100,000 are uh, you know, uh, estimated to have closed during this time or will close as a result of this economic upheaval and the fact that they have not been able to get access to this, uh, to this money, to this small pot of money, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, to be able to keep their businesses afloat. You know, they haven't been able to do that. Uh, but the whole purpose that, uh, of opening up, Donald Trump wants his numbers, his economic numbers to go up. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. I mean, for one, people are still concerned about the virus, as they should be. In fact, a, a new poll, and I don't have the exact numbers, but a majority of Americans still say, no, we should be concerned about this virus. And uh, even though, yes, there is obvious economic harm but we really should stay concerned about this virus. Especially since, you know, you uh, the numbers have shown in states that have already opened up, you have the rate of infections that have started to climb once again. Texas, Georgia, South Carolina, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a jump. There's going to be a spike here in Michigan as well in a couple of weeks. Now, some of the states, and I've reported this, uh, in Florida, for example, uh, they decided to no longer log coronavirus deaths. They're just they're just flat out hiding the numbers. In Georgia, with Brian Kemp, they put the numbers of infections out of order in order to hide and to say, oh, no, the trend, it's going down. When in reality, the trend was going back up. They just switched the dates to try to obfuscate to try to make sure that people, uh, you know, uh, would would buy his narrative about, no, no, we're ready to open up. It, uh, everybody go back to business. Go back to spending money, consuming, and doing all that stuff and making my economic numbers go up. A little inconvenient with those numbers, uh, unfortunately, rising. So here's the thing, right? Now, I was critical. You guys know I'm very critical of the right-wing anti-stay-at-home protests, Right? Here's why I'm not critical of these protests, even though there is a huge risk to these protesters, uh, you know, uh, protesting for black lives. Right. So the anti stay at home people, I'm not saying all of them, but I think there is a, a big majority of people who were wealthy white business owners. And then, of course, you also had the group of people that were right wing militia cosplayers, essentially. Uh, and then I'm sure a small group of those people were, were people that were legitimately concerned about, of course, the economic issues. But I think 
those two uh, others, those other groups were were massive. I mean, they what they are what uh, who made up the large majority of the protests. Okay, so I know what I'm kind of like butchering this, but understand right that the people who are legitimately concerned about the economy and not their own financial interests in the form of their businesses opening up or their employees coming back to work are, 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 are a small minority of these groups, right? So no, you, the majority of people you had were people who wanted services again, like for people to take care of their kids, childcare, right? And for people to give them haircuts and to do their nails. They wanted the working class to essentially go back to work for them. Whereas these protesters for black lives I think these are mostly working class people and their allies that are calling for racial justice. And if there's one risk that's worth taking, I think it is for racial justice. It's to protect black and brown lives and the lives of poor white people who also experience systemic violence. Um, these are the people that are protesting police brutality. Black people and their white allies. They're protesting police brutality. They're not protesting the fact that they can't get themselves lit up on Natty Light Bar with their friends. So understand the privilege of these stay-at-home protesters versus the actual protesters uh, that are protesting against police brutality for George Floyd. All I can hope, man, is that these protesters are, are staying, staying as safe as they can while they're continuing to bring a, a, a light to these injustices across the country hey guys hopefully you enjoyed that free video now i'm gonna have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the youtube algorithm messing around with view counts etc we're having a hard time adjusting to the new youtube reality which is where you guys come in see we have a patreon patreon.com slash tyt nation set up to help us rely on the you guys the viewers instead of big corporate ads look you know the show you know how i'm not in favor of big corporations anyway so help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron patreon.com slash tyt nation that goes a long way to help us keep the lights on and you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media